Hey, this is Dr. Barry. For the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about a very important element and why you need it and how much you need. Now, iodine is a very complicated subject. I've been working on this video for months. I'm going to post a ton of references down below in the show notes so you can read further about this. And I have full plans of making several other videos about iodine in the near future so that you can get a grasp of this very important topic. That is, if you're a mammal, because mammals need iodine. It's very important. Adults, if they have an iodine deficiency, can wind up with fatigue. They can wind up with trouble losing weight. They can wind up with a gorder. If, if children don't have enough iodine in the womb and when they're breastfeeding and when they're growing, they can actually lose up to 10 to 15 IQ points and can wind up with lots of different developmental delays and disorders. So the iodine is a very important topic, and you're not going to believe some of the stuff I tell you at the end of this video. So if you know someone who has any of these symptoms, who's thinking of having a child, who's breastfeeding, who's pregnant, please consider sharing this video with them because this is important information that you don't normally get told in your high school health class or even in college level courses. We all know that iodine is somehow related to thyroid function and that's fine, it is, but iodine does so much more and is so much more very, very important to optimizing your human life. So let's talk about iodine. Now, first of all, iodine is an element. It's number 53 on the periodic table of the elements. Remember that table? Iodine's on there. It was discovered way back in 1812 by a chemist. It's We've known about it for a long, long time. It's in the group on the periodic table of the halogens. So that also includes fluorine or fluoride you may have heard of, <clears throat> chlorine or chloride, uh, bromine or bromide, and then there's another one called astatine, which you probably have never heard of. I hadn't until I was making this video. So the predominant source of iodine on our planet comes from the ocean. And so if you live near the coastline, then there's tons of iodine in seafood and kelp and sea plants uh, and also in the soil near the ocean because of the, the, the pounding of the waves and some of the iodine gets in the air. Then it comes in and it's rained down on the soil. But as you get further and further away from the coastline, there's less and less iodine in the soil. Indeed, there are regions in the central part of the North American continent that have almost no iodine in the soil whatsoever. And back before we started to think about iodine and actually put it in things like salt, these people, all of, almost all of them had a gorder, which is a swelling of the thyroid gland because there was just no iodine in the soil. And so when they grew, the, grew their crops and harvested their animals, there was no iodine for them. And so the, their thyroid had to work double time or triple time, and it got much bigger than it should be. And so during one of the wars, when we were trying to draft young men for the service, we couldn't take them if they had a, a gorder. And so the federal government and Big Food came up with the bright idea of putting iodine into salt, which is a completely artificial construction. Uh, iodine doesn't typically come in salt in any meaningful amount. Uh, but that's how they decided to do it, because everyone loves salt. Everyone needs salt. Everyone eats salt. So they thought that's a pretty good way to get iodine into people's diet. And indeed, that's there are much worse ideas than that. I'm going to opine later on in this video that there's probably better ways to get your iodine than that. So we talked about the source. Now, here's a, a very important fact that you may not know. Every vertebrate needs iodine to survive, okay? And I'm talking about from, from humans to lions to gorillas, all the way down to the tiniest liver, lizard, not liver, lizard, the tiniest little rodent. Every animal with a spinal column has to have iodine in order to be alive. If I could magically reach into your body and pull out every atom of iodine out of your body, you would be dead within an hour. That's how important it is. And we always think about it in reference to the thyroid gland, but what you're going to find out later in this video is that it's much more important than that. It, it, it's very important for other functions as well. Now, a deficiency, as we said, leads to goiters, but it also leads to hundreds of other medical problems, other signs and symptoms, and other suffering. And so I want you to understand just how important iodine is. Why do you need it? Well, let's talk about this. Now, obviously, you've heard of the thyroid connection. You have to have iodine in order for your thyroid to make thyroid hormone. So uh, thyroxine, which is T4, 
the the four stands for four atoms of iodine. Triodo um, triodothyrodine has three atoms of iodine in it. And there's actually T1 and T2, which are thyroid hormones you've never heard of. Uh, doctors will say, well, they don't do anything. Now, and if you follow me much, you'll know that the human body doesn't do anything for no reason. So T1 and T2 definitely serve purposes. We just don't know what they are yet. We need to get on that and find that out. So the thyroid concentrates iodine out of your bloodstream that you've eaten, and that's how you make thyroid hormone. You may know the thyroid is your master gland. It's in charge of really the function of all other glands and all other tissues in your body. Uh, so this is, uh, right at, first and foremost, very, very important that you have optimized thyroid function, and you cannot have that without adequate amounts of iodine. Now, but here's the kicker. Here's what most people don't know, including most doctors. Every gland in your body, from your sweat glands to your salivary glands, your spit glands, to your pancreas, to your liver, every gland, whether exocrine or endocrine, concentrates iodine. Now, the human body never wastes energy. It never does something that it doesn't need to do. So if, if, you're, if the, 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 the mammary glands in your breasts, if they concentrate iodine, there's a reason they do that. That's important. And so, and that's actually true. The, the glands in the human breast concentrate iodine. And that, that means something. That means that that is important. So every gland concentrates iodine. But here's something, something else you may not have known. Every single cell in the human body that we have looked at has something called a sodium iodine symporter. And that's on the cell membrane. That's a little machine that basically spits out a sodium and sucks in an iodine. And, and so really, it looks like every cell in the human body concentrates iodine to some degree. That means that the cells need that iodine. And that's why if I pulled all yours out, you'd be dead within the hour. Iodine does many things in the body that we know about. It also does many things that we do not know about at all. So far, we've documented that 84 different tissues in your body need iodine to function properly. And I put a link down below. So if you want to look into this in more detail, you can. <clears throat> now, the next big question is, how much iodine do we need? I've told you what it is. I've told you why we need it. Now, let's talk about how much. The official recommended daily allowance or daily intake in the United States is 150 micrograms. And a microgram is one thousand of a milligram. So it's a tiny amount. So the average adult should get 150 micrograms, according to the federal government. Now, even the federal government realizes that pregnant women and women who are breastfeeding need more iodine than that. So the RDI for pregnant women is 220 micrograms a day. And for breastfeeding or lactating women is 290 micrograms a day, almost double of what it is for just a regular person. Now, right off the bat, that ought to tell you that's odd. wonder why pregnant women need more if it's not that big of a deal. wonder why breastfeeding women need more if it's not that big of a deal. They need more because it is that big of a deal. And remember, so basically 150 micrograms is what the average person needs in order to make their thyroid have enough so that they don't have a gorder that I talked about earlier, right? A swollen thyroid. But what about the other glands in your body? 150 micrograms a day is, a, is enough for your thyroid. Yes, it's true. But what about all your salivary glands, your sweat glands? What about your liver, your pancreas, your, your adrenal glands? What about your ovaries and testicles? They need iodine as well in order to function optimally. And so it's my contention that you need more than 150 micrograms a day. I think the average person needs more than 290 micrograms a day. So let's talk about that. So some experts recommend that, that you should take up to 50 milligrams a day of iodine. Now that seems like a little much to me. That would be that would be 50,000 micrograms and the RDI is 150. So that's a that's a big jump. Now here, just to give you a frame of reference, let me give you two examples. The average person living in Japan eats from 10 to 15 milligrams or 10 to 15,000 micrograms of iodine every day because they eat such a seafood heavy diet. They eat lots of seafood. They eat lots of sea vegetables and kelp and all these things are very rich sources of iodine. And so if 
as some people have said, eating more than a milligram of iodine a day is very dangerous, then the Japanese should be extinct. And indeed, any other uh, population of people who live near the ocean who get anywhere from 8 to 15 milligrams of iodine a day, they should die if it's that terrible. They should all have hyperthyroidism or uh, autoimmune thyroiditis or whatever it is that this the expert says, oh, if you get too much iodine, it will harm you. Example number two, there's a medication called amiodarone that doctors like me give to patients who have heart failure or severe heart problems. Amiodarone has 75 milligrams of iodine in it. And most people take 200 milligrams of amiodarone either once or twice a day. So that means the average person taking amiodarone is getting somewhere between 75 milligrams a day and 150 milligrams a day of iodine. And they don't die. We watch their thyroid function because they're taking so much iodine, but they don't get all these terrible complications that you have heard that people who get more than a milligram of iodine a day get. They just don't get that. So the Japanese aren't harmed by 15 milligrams a day. People taking amiodarone are not harmed by taking 75 milligrams a day. So therefore, the, the RDI now looks very puny in comparison at 150 micrograms or uh, 0.015 milligrams. That's what it would be. So how much should you take? Well, here's what I recommend. I recommend that most people try to get one to three milligrams of iodine every day. You're going to far surpass the RDI for regular people and even pregnant and lactating women as well, but you're not going to get anywhere near as much as the Japanese eat every day of their life, right? You're not going to get nearly as much as somebody who's taking amiodarone. And so I think that's a very safe middle ground. There have been published reports, which I'll link to below, of women with a condition called fibrocystic breast pain or disease. When they take somewhere between three and five milligrams of iodine a day, their pain in the cysts go completely away. Absolutely. Uh, there are many, many people who have chronically cold hands and cold feet, no matter what they do. And when they start taking one to three milligrams a day of iodine, it goes completely away. There are many people who thought they had fibromyalgia and it's really an iodine deficiency. Uh, and so back to one of the most important things I talk about when I talk about iodine is brain development in newborns or even children in the womb, in, the, in their mom. So if a, if a mother doesn't have an adequate source of iodine, she can actually have a baby who has a, an IQ that's 10 to 15 points lower than it could have been otherwise. Can you imagine how life-changing that would be if you could just add 10 IQ points for a baby? Big deal. So I take iodine every single day. So does my wife, Nisha. She's currently pregnant, and she's taking about three milligrams of iodine every single day. And we use a drop that you can get. I'm going to put a link to it down below that you can put. Each drop is, is about a milligram, milligram and a half, depending on the size of the drop. And I don't think you're ever going to be in danger of overdose, overdosing on iodine by using one to three of these drops a day. Uh, if, you, if you have normal kidney function, you're going to pee out any extra iodine that you may take. And so say you accidentally put four drops in there, you'll just pee the extra out. Within 24 hours, you're going to excrete all of the iodine you don't need out of your body. And so only if you have end-stage kidney failure would you worry about it. Maybe just use only one drop so that way you made sure you weren't getting too much. Now, iodine is a very important topic, and I'm going to be making more videos in the near future about this. If you enjoyed this video, please click that subscribe button and the bell right beside it. So every time I get a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first to know if my videos have helped your health in some way, please consider becoming a patron. You can sign up below with my Patreon link. It's right down below. You can throw a buck or two my way, and it gives me more time and more resources to make videos just like this. All right, guys, this is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.